Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Floyd Richmond. Today I'd like to take you through the Houghton College Teacher Education Lesson Plan Elements. These lesson plan elements will be required for every student in every major at Houghton College. Uh, you'll notice at the beginning of the document it asks you to specify the grade level uh, for which this lesson will be designed. Uh, that should be clear to everyone what that means. There is also a request that you would indicate the date or um, the date of uh, teaching, the date of implementation of this lesson, so that should be also obvious to everyone. Uh, this pre-reflection area is where you would uh, think, uh, identify the kinds of things that you would need to think about before teaching this specific lesson. And there are three questions that you are told to address in this area. How does knowledge of your learners for example, their needs, funds of knowledge, etc., inform the development of the lesson. How does your knowledge of theory, pedagogy, responsive instructional strategies inform the development of this lesson? And what academic language will students encounter in this lesson? And how will you explicitly support students in understanding and applying academic language within this lesson? So uh, let me just go ahead and say quickly, music teachers, I'd like to specify specifically for you that what we're going to do is we're going to uh, simplify this just a little bit. So question number one, how does knowledge of your learners, for example, their needs, funds of knowledge, etc., inform the development of this lesson? I'd like every music teacher to include this statement to address this specific question. This lesson is constructed specifically for students in and identify the class for which it is. Uh, this lesson is going to be given, and uh, you should choose from the list of classes below, band, choir, orchestra, general music, keyboard class, guitar class, audio production, video production, music theory, music appreciation, or some other music class as is applicable. And in grade, and once again you should select from the list below, pre-K, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, or high school one, high school two, and high school three. Uh, this should generally cover about 90% of everything that needs to be covered for question number one. Uh, I'll just like to go ahead and say plainly, if you're writing for an 8th grade band, you do not have to specify all the skills that were learned in 4th through 7th grade band. These are implied. You should, however, specify any prerequisite skills that would be out of the ordinary. So you could include this one sentence at the top and then any skills that would be out of the ordinary. Hopefully that simplifies answering question one. Let's take a look at question two. How does your knowledge of theory, pedagogy, responsive instructional strategies inform the development of this lesson? Once again, I've uh, reduced this to one sentence that I'd like you to include, and I'd like you to also amplify that should there be something that's out of the ordinary. The one sentence is this. Lessons are age and developmentally appropriate with, a differentiated, with differentiated learning and accommodations for students on various levels. So every ensemble automatically includes parts on various levels. You've got a first trumpet part that has all the high notes and uh, perhaps more difficult rhythms, a second trumpet part that's got lower notes and perhaps easier rhythms. Uh, every general music class is delivered incorporated, incorporating developmentally and psychologically appropriate pedagogy. pedagogy. So for example, you will do the activities with the students. March the beat before you explain to them uh, what a beat is. Sing rounds and uh, sing songs with ostinatos before you explain to them what harmony is and so on. Uh, this is a basic uh, theory, pedagogy, uh, instructional strategy that I expect everyone to know. I do not expect you to re uh, rewrite uh, your uh, Piaget textbook or your Brunner textbook or any other um, cognitive psychology or psychology of critical thinking uh, in this particular area. Uh, it's pretty much assumed that you will know those things. Um, include the sentence above. Specify additional theory, pedagogy, or responsive instructional strategies that would be out of the ordinary, uh, which would impact the development of the lesson. So, third question. What academic language will students encounter in this language, and how will you explicitly support students in understanding and applying academic language within the lesson? Well, here you are going to have to list any specific vocabulary that's going to be used in the lesson and explain how it will be addressed. And this kind of ties into the next uh, item as well. So if I switch back over to the lesson plan, uh, you will notice that uh, our next item on the Houghton College 
his objectives. And uh, I'm going to ask our music students to insert an additional area here, uh, something called goals. And that goals is going to tie into your academic vocabulary, as I mentioned. So, <clears throat> melody, uh, okay. I'd like you to address these five elements of music, melody, rhythm, harmony, form, and expression. It may not be that you're teaching something for each and every one of these, so you don't have to uh, include those that you're not teaching. But if you are teaching something about melody, high notes and low notes, same and different, um, if you're teaching specific solfege, then those would be the kind of academic uh, vocabulary items that I would expect you to identify. And you can either identify them above or you can simply say C uh, material listed in the goals. Under rhythm, learning specific rhythms, tempos playing together. If you are running, learning specific tempos like largo, largo, grave, andante, allegro, prestissimo, and so on, then those that vocabulary would make its way into your goal section. Uh, harmony, if you are using terms such as ostinato, ostinatos, uh, rounds, canons, uh, drones, and so on, then uh, that vocabulary would make its way into your uh, goals. If you're talking about dissonant and consonant harmony, if you're talking about major or minor uh, chords, then that vocabulary would make its way into your goals. Uh, the same thing is true of form, which is the structure of a piece, as we know, and, and the same thing is true of expressions, uh, where you would be uh, teaching the students about dynamics, tempos, articulations, styles of the music, and so on. So every music teacher should be explaining what their specific musical goals are going to be. Melody, rhythm, rhythm, harmony, form, and expression. And any academic vocabulary that's going to be used should be incorporated into that. All right, switching back over to the lesson plan here. I uh, notice that objectives here say that uh, we're going to include them in this form. Today we will learn how to do this or do that. So specifically, what is the content that is going to be learned? That's uh, something that you'll answer in the form indicated here. Uh, we will learn this by, and this, this is over here, action verbs. So this would be by performing or creating or responding or connecting, uh, those types of things. Uh, you will know that you have learned this by, and uh, typically in music class that would be through performance or through uh, observation of a student as they um, execute the teacher's instructions, as they uh, do the movements that are indicated, as they <clears throat> sing or play the instruments as indicated. Um, all right, I believe that really no further comment other than what's found in this particular description is required for objectives. Uh, standards. Uh, there are three sets of standards that I would like our music teachers to use. The first set of standards is going to be the uh, NA. FME, NAFME, uh, standards for 2014, or I'm sorry, uh, 1994. So this is a set of standards that the profession has followed f since 1994. They are widely used, and uh, although they are 20 years old, um, this uh, that might give them a little bit of additional age. The truth of the matter is it's also giving them, giving them a very large uh, established foundation of people who use them and understand them. So I expect all music students to memorize these nine standards. Singing alone and with others, a varied repertoire of music. Performing on instruments alone and with others, a varied repertoire of music. Number two. Number three, improvising melodies, variations, and accompaniments. Number four, composing and arranging music within specified guidelines. Number five, reading and notating music. Number six, listening to, analyzing, and describing music. Number seven, evaluating music and musical performances. Number eight, understanding relationships between music, the other arts, and disciplines outside the arts. And number nine, understanding music in relationship to history and culture. So that when you were writing the standards then, uh, all you would do would be write down uh, NAFME 1994 and then put the number, number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on. All right, that's the first set of standards that I expect music teachers to address in their lesson plans. The second set of standards that I expect teachers to address are the NAFME 2014 standards. Although these are four years old now, and although most states are adopting standards that are parallel to these, uh, they uh, haven't completely supplemented the uh, 
or supplanted the 1994 standard so we're going to go ahead and continue to use both for a few years here uh, eventually these will be the only standards that are addressed the 2014 standards are very similar to all state standards and I'm just going to go ahead and click on this one for elementary general music you would have noticed there were several different other areas like performing ensembles and technology into which we can go and notice the big topic at the uh, beginning of the page I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now that creating and I'm going to scroll down to the next big topic uh, performing okay it should yes yeah, should say performing and I'm going to go to my next big topic here which is going to be responding and the next big topic will be connecting those four are the same New York standards uh, we call them artistic processes in New York um, that are uh, adopted by NAFME and so I would expect you to know those in that order number one is creating number two is performing number three is responding and number four is connecting I'd like you to identify the NAFME standards in your lesson plans by just simply saying NAFME 2014 number one number two number three or number four Okay, uh, there's no need to write all of this out. I do highly suggest that every person actually come to and work with this document as well. Okay, the New York standards also need to be addressed. And uh, the quickest and easiest way for me to uh, suggest that you would uh, do that would be to, uh, be to watch my separate video on the New York standards. Uh, so but uh, perhaps I can just go ahead and give you a real quick overview here now uh, here's a link to the uh, video that I've created on the uh, New York standards I'll show you at the end of this how to get this document so you would specify uh, this is a New York standard MU colon and then specify the artistic process either creating performing responding or connecting and then you would also identify the anchor standard 1-1-1-2-1-3 and so on and you would identify the grade so this example up here at the top here shows what a typical New York standard looks like once again if you are unacquainted with this particular information you should watch this other video on the New York standards it'll bring you up to speed on what you need to know there okay I'm gonna switch back over to our lesson plans and I think the rest of this is going to go quickly because I have now explained the things that are most complex uh, the standard lesson plan for Houghton College uh, teacher education program will uh, be uh, for uh, well will require these elements you'll need to list the materials that are used in teaching the lesson there will be an introduction and I couldn't say it any better than what's found right here so I would expect you just simply to read this and uh, to be able to uh, apply that as necessary. Uh, teaching strategies, once again, I'm going to say here that uh, this is the uh, sequence of steps that you and your students will complete. I would expect you to say the teacher will, the student will, and alternate those statements uh, more or less throughout the lesson. Sometimes the students will do three things for every one thing the teacher does, or vice versa, and uh, that is perfectly okay. Uh, the next element is accommodations if you have special now this is not the accommodations that are just a part of your normal instruction but if you have special accommodations then uh, you would need to specify what those would be uh, there is a conclusion so you are going to include a summary uh, just uh, bringing the lesson plan home after you have uh, done your teaching and so you would need to uh, describe your conclusion here uh, also, uh, there will be assessments that are uh, created during the regular lesson plan, and so you will need to uh, address those. I'm going to switch back over to my uh, notes on this. As I've indicated here, pretty much everything here is, is as indicated in the HCTEP lesson plan. When it comes to assessment, though, I really do have to talk a little bit specifically to music teachers. So you will uh, create your assessments as indicated in the lesson plan, but please note, music teachers of large ensembles and general music classes may literally see hundreds of music students daily. You don't have time to do uh, the written assessments that are common in other classes. You don't have time to grade 500 pages every day. And so uh, basically you are necessarily going to do a lot of assessment through techniques which include observations of performances, playing and singing tests, and so on. 
Um, as I mentioned before, written assessments are possible in some classes, but they will be used much less in music class. Uh, formative assessments to determine the progress toward a goal and summative assessments to determine the mastery of a goal should both be used in music class. I'll return now to the uh, post-lesson uh, self-reflection and I just go ahead and mention that that also will be delivered pretty much as described in the lesson plan. You should write a reflection on every lesson that you teach and every lesson that you observe. So what went well and what went poorly? What might you change to make this lesson plan stronger the next time that it is taught? How can you strengthen what you have done? How can you be more efficient about what you have done? How can you eliminate the problems that encountered that, that you encountered that were unexpected? Um, so these, the reflection is a great place to do some thinking. I think you'll have no problem uh, incorporating that into your lesson plan. I'm going to switch back over here to one additional uh, bit of information. Uh, these are web addresses that are found uh, that uh, uh, connect to specific documents. Um, this particular information including all these web addresses is found at this particular doc uh, this particular web address floydrichmond.com slash houghton slash hctep dash lp notes period docx if you go to that web address and download this document you will have access to all of the rest of these links this is the houghton college uh, teacher education lesson plan itself these are my notes this is a youtube video explaining these lesson plans the video that you're watching right this second the address it, obviously this is being created right now so there is no address now but once i have this posted i will uh, put this address into this document which you can get right here uh, here's a link to the new york state standards here's a uh, link to a youtube video of the, uh, with me explaining the new york state standards here's a link to the nafme 2014 standards and here's a link to the nafme 1994 standards okay this all sounds far more complicated than it is all we're saying is that every time you create a lesson plan we'd like you to create these elements i have created over here a pre-reflection set of sentences that i'd like music students to use and you don't have to expend extensive energy addressing these questions i have inserted an additional element in here called goals that also uh, explain the academic vocabulary that will be used in the lesson uh, for music students only uh, objectives you will use the process as founded here standards i've given extensive explanation of the standards materials introductions teaching strategies accommodations conclusions uh, are all pretty much standard as would be taught in any lesson plan assessment is a little bit unique for uh, music teachers and i have addressed that in the uh, uh, document that is online and then here we've got our post lesson self-reflection and that also is pretty standard uh, reflection is how uh, you get better in e as a teacher and uh, it pretty much always works that those people who are best at reflecting on what went well and what didn't go well are the ones who are going to improve the most all right thanks for watching this i hope it's been helpful